hello to all of you and thank you so much for being here with us. We want to welcome you to the Type C for Homeschool Parents webinar. We will be talking about several things uh, within Type C, so I think we're going to answer most of your questions as we walk through the presentation. But if we don't, be sure you make a note or send us a message on the Q&A so that we can answer those specific questions that you have at the end of the call. Uh, we'll talk about things like navigation, setup, how to complete certain tasks, and again, time for questions at the end. Uh, this is going to be a very detailed presentation, uh, so let's get started. So the first thing is, what is Type C? And we're really two fold items. Uh, we are a web-based keyboarding program that teaches students how to touch type through step-by-step -step lessons and through games, but we also offer transdisciplinary typing-based learning drills for spelling and vocabulary words. And I know a lot of you are very interested in what you can do with Type C in terms of spelling and vocab. So we will definitely dig into that when I start showing you some of the features within the program. We have several different curriculums for you to use. Within the typing program, we have Type C Kids 2.0. That is the animated version. You will typically start a younger student here or possibly an upper elementary student who enjoys animation. Certainly anyone can start at that level, but your older students will probably benefit more from starting at a little bit higher level. Uh, but if they love animation, you can always give it a try. Type C Kids is the next uh, level up, and that is best suited for your middle school age children. And again, here I want to point out, if you start your student at a particular point and it's not working, you can move them around with no problem. You can change which typing curriculum you use at any time. The next one up is the interactive curriculum, and that is best suited for older students who may have a limited amount of keyboarding experience or not. Uh, if you have an older student, upper middle school or even high school, who doesn't have any keyboard experience, you could still start them on the interactive and that will not be a problem at all. Okay, great. I will just briefly touch on what we've talked about so far. Um, essentially talking about some of the different features within Type C, the different curriculum typing curriculum that you can choose for your students, the Type C Kids 2.0, which is the animated version, Type C Kids, which is a great place to start middle school ages and up, and the interactive, which is a good place to start your older students or students with some keyboard experience. Um, we were just jumping into the transdisciplinary typing practice content. So you have the option to choose some common core content that your students can use to practice typing. Um, basically, these are learning drills, if you will, or typing drills. So the common core content is not part of the primary typing instruction program. This is additional practice that you can assign to your students. We also have that additional content available um, that falls within the standards of NGSS, and that's your next generation science standards. So you have many options. The, we're going to talk about the different curriculum categories that we have. We do have some courses in addition to typing. We'll talk about setting up your Type C homeschool account. And as many of you are very interested in spelling and word work or vocabulary work, we're going to dig into that as well. So for learning the keyboard, I mentioned the three programs already, 
which is the Type C Kids, Type C Kids 2.0, and the Interactive. We do have a fourth program, which is the Professional Program. We're not going to dig into that one today unless you have some very specific questions or needs pertaining to that program. Um, that is very much for your older students who are quite skilled already. The Common Core and TEX, which is the Texas Education, the Department of Education Standards uh, content for your learning uh, drills or typing drills will look like this, and I'm going to show you in detail how to assign that work and how to access that once we get logged into Type C. We also have classes within the IT and computer realm that your students can take. Again, these are separate from the typing class itself. And they can be enrolled concurrently, so in these courses and in the typing courses at the same time. Uh, there are some career and success classes available. And last but not least, there's a class for you. If you would like to run through this program, this is for you as a teacher or parent. But hopefully we're going to touch on most of what would be in that class today, but you're always welcome to uh, take a look through that particular class as well. So the next thing we'll talk about is how to choose the beginning curriculum for your student. Any student can use any of the levels, and these are just suggestions for where to begin with your student. It's not a hard and fast rule, so you have the flexibility to make those determinations based on your student. But if you're not sure where to start, these are some great suggestions. Your second grade student, you might start with the Type C Kids curriculum, your grade for student, you could start with Type C Kids 2.0, and so on. I will show you what the common core differences are, not the details, but the differences where you would choose grade level two. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor move here, but under grade two, we have common core two. Under grade three, we have common core three. That simply means that the content is suitable for that grade level, so they will understand what they're typing. And that will make more sense to you when we take a look at it. So at this point, we are ready to jump in and take a look at setting up your homeschool account. Now, I suspect because most of you are already with us, you've set up your account, but just in case, we're going to start from the very beginning in case anyone's having a challenge with that. Um, then we, so that we will be looking at creating an admin user. Next, we will set up a class. We will choose class settings, and there are several details in there that will be beneficial to you. I'll show you how to create users, and the user is simply your student who is enrolled in the class that you have set up. And we'll look at some of the reporting tools. All right. So I begin. Now, can you all see the Type C login screen at this point? Yes. Yes, OK, great. So I have begun the process of signing up. So this does say full name, so I will do that. Uh, your email address, you establish your password, and simply click the sign up button. You would have received an activation code when you first purchased your Type C subscription. I've already copied mine, so I'll paste that in and create my account. And I am now in 
type the keyboard at the very beginning. The first thing you want to do is click on admin right here. And you want to begin by setting up a class for your student. What you see here on the screen is simply a dashboard. Um, we'll refer back to this as we go through, but we are going to primarily be using this navigation bar along the left-hand side of the screen. So we're going to click on Classes first. And it may seem counterintuitive to you to be setting up a class because you're a homeschooler and these are homeschool students. But you're going to quickly see why that's beneficial. We also recommend that you do a separate class for each of your students. And I'm going to show you um, a couple of reasons why. So first we click on Create Class and we're going to enter a class name. And we'll just call your student John. You may enter a class description here if you would like. And you may select the grade here. Selecting this grade doesn't really tie you into uh, any particular rules, and it can be changed at any time. Uh, you may also choose other right here if you don't want to deal with setting up the grade. Next, you will choose which keyboarding curriculum you want your student to use and the type of class. This is a dedicated keyboarding class that we are working on. And if you remember some of the other curriculums that I mentioned to you at the beginning, the IT and computer classes, or the, the English, language arts, business law, all of those at the very beginning, that's what we're talking about here. For today's purposes, we're looking at just this dedicated keyboarding class. So now we'll click Create Class. And here is our dashboard for John's typing class. If you look under students, the next thing, um, you can see that there aren't any students enrolled yet. So all we did is just simply create the class first. So the next thing that we will need to do is create a student to populate this class. So we'll go back over here to users. We'll click Add User, and right here we're going to put John, and we'll just use my last name for that. We're going to let the system generate the username and password, but if you'd like to set your own username and password to something that's more memorable for your student, you simply deselect these boxes. These fields will open, and you may type in your own username and password. In this field, you may enter the email address for your student. This is not mandatory, so you may enter it if you would like, or you may leave it blank. This type of user is a student, and here's the reason why we set up his class first. This last dropdown where we select the class to enroll the student in has John right here. And I like to name the class with the student name just because it's easier for me to find it in this dropdown, but you can call it anything you like. So we'll hit Add, and we are successful. The username and password has been generated for this student, and you'll see copy to clipboard right here. If you click this, you can then paste this username and password somewhere else for reference, uh, or in an email to your student or a text message or whatever you want to do. One thing I want to remind you of is you can only copy one username and password at a time. 
You must paste it somewhere else before you copy the next user's username and password. If you don't, whatever you copy will replace what you previously copied. You can always get this information back again, but that's just a little heads up to you. All right, so we're going to view our student list now. So over here you see classes is highlighted. This is the overview tab for the class. Now we have our student list. Right here we have our student listed. Next we're going to move over to curriculum. So we will click on curriculum and you can see that the curriculum that we chose when we registered our student is displayed right here. I mentioned to you earlier that students could enroll in additional classes at the same time as their typing class. So I'm going to show you how to add another class to your student. Click on Assign Curriculum. Now we wouldn't want to assign a second keyboarding class. They only should be working on one keyboarding class at a time and they should take them in order. So as they progress through the typing programs, it's you simply, when they finish one, you simply assign the next one in line. Um, but you don't do that yet. You want to wait until they've completed the first one. So at this point, we can add Common Core typing drills right here. So remember we mentioned Common Core Grade 2, Common Core Grade 3, Grade 4, Grade 5, etc. The only reason for that, again, is the content is better suited for that particular age group. And again, this has no bearing on the typing class itself. This curriculum is strictly typing drills for your student and what they're typing is Common Core content. So they have the opportunity to learn about various subjects while they're typing. If you scroll down here, this is the section with the Texas Education approved curriculum. You are welcome to use it, even if you're not in Texas. And Right here, you see the IT computer classes that you can sign your students up for, career and success, and you wouldn't want to assign the teacher parent class to your student. That one would be for you. So we'll just scroll back up here and we will assign this Common Core Grade 2 practice curriculum. So now your student will see that they have these two options to choose from when they log in. The next thing that we're going to look at is some of the settings. And this is the biggest reason why I recommend setting up one class for each of your students, because it lets you control a couple of different things for those students. First of all, if you would like, you can set class-wide goals for typing speed and accuracy. Now, these numbers here are just a goal. If you want to mandate a certain speed or a certain accuracy in order for the student to move past a lesson, you can do that. If you click on typing here, you can Set a minimum speed and a minimum accuracy. If your student doesn't reach that minimum on a lesson, it will not let them go beyond that lesson. They will have to repeat that lesson until they've reached the minimum that you've set here. I just caution you to be generous because you don't want your students to get frustrated Certainly don't set this at 100% because your students will be frustrated if they can't move on. Uh, keep it high enough to be challenging, but keep them moving through the process. So we'll go back to this general page again. We can set our class-wide goals right here. 
You can change these numbers if you would like. That's completely up to you. Uh, disable skipping ahead is always good. This will force your student to take each lesson in order and they will not be able to skip lessons and move ahead or jump around through the various lessons. This is a key one here. Sometimes we have some challenges with our students wanting to only play the games and not move through each of the lessons. You can go in and disable the games for your student until they have finished their lessons for the day. So you can disable it. Once they've finished, you go in, re-enable the games for that student. They'll be able to play the games at that point, and then you'll have to disable it again for the following day. And that is a great feature um, if you have a student who gets distracted by the games. So these are the most important things. If there are things that you see on the screen that I'm not covering that you feel pertain to you or could be valuable to you, be sure you throw those questions into the Q&A and we will catch them at the end here, okay? The next thing we're going to look at is um, we're going to attempt reporting here and see if we have some data. Um, let's go back and choose a student and see if we – we'll go back to our demo class. We have some reporting. So now I'm back in the same place, just in a different class, and we should have some reports available here. Okay, so we have a little bit of student data here that you can take a look at for um, the demo class. And this was pre-populated for us. And we've got the ability to change some of the parameters for our reporting. So we have individual student performance. We can see their typing mastery, their current speed, accuracy, adjusted speed is um, factoring out errors. Uh, we have minutes of use, how many Type-C points they have earned, and we'll, we'll show you the Hall of Fame for the Type-C points. And the last course, some of you might think of course as class or lesson, but it is the last course that they have completed. And it shows you what percent um, – Jan, you'll have to correct me if I'm mistaken – if this is the percent through the entire curriculum, Type-C Kids 2.0. Um, we may have to get back to you on that to know for sure if that is uh, for this particular level or if it is for the entire curriculum. Uh, let's go ahead and click on a couple of these other reporting metrics and see what we have here. There is your average typing performance. And let's see if typing mastery gives us anything different. Okay, so it looks like this student is improving as you look along the graph here, and they are at novice level. Um, all right, we're going to move into word work next. And I'm going to change back to the class that we created for John and click on word work. Now here we can assign a word list to John to practice typing. Now remember, when we're assigning these word lists to the student, it is typically going to be a game or activity or a typing exercise associated with that list. You will not see quizzes or graded quizzes or even graded assignments for this particular section, for any of the word work, vocab, or spelling. This is strictly drills and practice so that when you administer your 
um, paper quiz or other online quiz, they will be better prepared for those assignments or quizzes. So we're going to go ahead and just select this first um, word list right here because it's handy. And I'll show you what that looks like. I clicked the wrong button, sorry about that. All right, it's not letting me assign the word list. Let me try one more time. All right, so you just click right here to, uh, to take a look at that particular word list. If you want to create your own unique word list for spelling or vocabulary practice, you click on the Create Word List button, and you type in your words right here. So type or paste one word per line, then press OK. You give a name to that word list something that's easy for the student to understand, like a date would be great, or if it's uh, directly related to a lesson number in another workbook. So we can just go ahead and create a test list just so that you can see this here. Okay, and that's all there is to creating your own unique um, word list. Now, if we click over to tests and assignments, that will enable you to assign the word list to your student. Um, give this just a moment here. Okay. Right now it says there are no tests or assignments because we have not attached any to John's class yet. So we will click on Create Test Assignment, and we will choose a vocabulary assignment for this exercise. We can also choose a typing assignment, a typing test, a spelling assignment, or a vocabulary assignment. Be aware if you choose a typing test, that you will need to provide that content. Um, you may be able to choose the content from the Common Core curriculum, but you will have to provide the text either way. So let's go ahead and look at this vocabulary assignment first. We're going to click on Select Word List. And here is the list that we created. So we're going to attach that one. We'll select it, we'll click on it, and then hit the Select button in the lower right-hand corner. And now we're going to choose how the student is going to interact with that list. So we'll click on Select Activity, and you will find several different types of games that your student can play, and that will allow them to interact with that, those uh, words that you selected. You can also choose just strictly keyboarding skills. So that's going to be just straight up typing practice. Um, it will not be a game. And you have a test uh, typing lesson here and test yourself here. So again, those are going to be straight up typing types of activities. And these at the top are going to be speed boosting games and accuracy building. So we're going to choose following words, and we'll click Use. So we're going to preview that real quick to see what this looks like, to make sure that this is what we want. So we click on this Preview button right here. 
Oh, it wants an assignment name. Okay. And we are going to click Start. And we will type the words as they fall before they hit the bottom. So you'll just see those words cascading down the screen. Well, I don't know what that one is. Was it hyphen it wanted me to type? Okay. These are not the words that we put on our list, so we'll need to go see if I selected the wrong list. And I'm going to close this activity now. But you can see that the students will have the opportunity to practice typing the words that you specified. Um, let's go look at our test list real quick. All right. So I typed in the word cat. And because this is a vocabulary activity, you see the word feline, mammal, usually, and having had started falling on the screen there. It's actually cascading through the definition of these vocabulary words that we've selected. So those are the types of things that, will, that your student will be typing with that vocabulary activity. Let's go ahead and set up a spelling activity now. Okay. So we're still within tests and assignments. We're going to click Create Test Assignment again. And we will choose Spelling Assignment this time. And we're going to select that same word list that we created earlier, our test list. But remember, we can go through and choose from this dropdown right here from a tremendous number of word lists, including lists that are grade specific for our students. So you have lots of options here. But we're going to use our test list. So we've selected it. We'll click Select. Now we need to choose an activity for this spelling list. And you can see we have some typing fun activities some accuracy building games, speed boosting games, and then we have just the straight up keyboard skills. So let's choose Clumsy Blocky. This is our friend who guides us through our animated typing program. And we'll create the spelling assignment. So now your student has two assignments here. They have a vocabulary assignment, and they have a spelling assignment to be completed. You can specify, let's just see how, um, how many times you want them to complete it. You can give them a due date. You can look to see if they've completed the work yet. And I'm going to switch back over here to John's dashboard again using this navigation bar right at the top of the screen. Okay. Um, I think that these are the key areas on this side to show you. And I think from here, this is a great place to launch into some Q&A if I haven't covered some of the features of Type C for you. Um, this is kind of a broad overview. I'm going to let, I'm show you one more thing, actually, before we jump into the Q&A. Um, that's the student interface. If you look right here in the top right corner where it says student interface, I'm just going to click on that, and it's going to show you what the student sees when they log in. So if you click on this View Student Interface here, when the student logs in, they are going to see their tasks right here. And you see the small number two right above my tasks. We'll click on that. And right here, you're going to see these are the two assignments that we created for your students. And 
they can click on this Do Now button over here. At this point, this assignment is set for one attempt. So we only want them to try it one time. And that can be altered. You can set it for numerous uh, practice opportunities for them. They are not limited to just once. When you sign it up, you've got the power to change that. If you click on Courses, this is going to show you um, it's actually showing, this doesn't show, it should show only what the student has. And um, I think it's just populating from the admin side because you're seeing all of the courses rather than just the courses that we have selected for your student. Um, the last thing here is the Hall of Fame. And I mentioned the Type C points earlier when we were looking at the dashboard. And the Hall of Fame is where those points come into play. You can set up the Hall of Fame for your students. They can compete against just the kids on your Type C login, so just your children can compete against each other on this Hall of Fame, or you can allow them to compete against all of the students out there, and their names will be listed on this Hall of Fame. Um, if they, once they get enough points, um, they will be listed or ranked on this Hall of Fame against everyone. So now I'm going to click back to admin. And we're back in our dashboard. We are at our home screen right here. We have our classes listed. This is where our class for John is. Under curriculum, that shows all the different curriculum options that are available to you. Word work, that's what we talked about for vocabulary and spelling practice. Users, that's where we set John up. So we set up our student under this tab. And then these are your administrative uh, tabs right here. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into some questions. And I not sure if I, let me see if I can switch back and look at both the questions and show you um, the Type C screen at the same time. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have any questions out here that we have not answered yet? Let's just take a look. And Jan, if you want to help me sift through some of the questions so we can move through that quicker, that would be great. Yes, um, sure. So the first one I'm seeing here is the question about a daily schedule to be Type C. And is Type C a semester long class? So. Um, there isn't a daily schedule per se. I, the students are not required to complete a particular number of assignments per day, but about 10 minutes a day, particularly for your younger students, about three times a week is a good number to shoot for. Um, you certainly can specify a number of assignments if you want, but I think the time is probably better. And then when they are close to that 10 minutes, let them wrap up with whatever they're doing and end their typing practice time or typing learning time um, by playing some games. And as far as being a semester long class, no. Certainly you could push it and finish in a semester if that was important to you. Um, but it is each level is designed for at least a school year and longer if necessary. And if I do not answer your question, uh, what you posted, just pop back on and give us another question, okay? Um, a quick way to create one assignment per lesson in a curriculum, or is there a better way to use assignments? Okay. You do not need to create an assignment per lesson in the typing curriculum. And I'm thinking if you are asking, is there a way to create one assignment per lesson in from a different curriculum? Let's say from your grammar curriculum, you're trying to create 
an assignment each week for the vocabulary words that you're studying in English or in history. Um, what I walked through on how to create the assignment is the best way to do it. And if I didn't answer your question about how to create an assignment, you can drop in another question on that, and I'm happy to run through that for you again. I did not set my typers in their own class. If I go back and do that now, will they lose their progress? No, they will not lose their progress. Um, not only that, but if you reassign them to a different um, curriculum, it is my understanding that they will not lose their progress either. Let me read the rest of your question. Um, no, I guess we're good. I think I got it all. How do I receive the information to start an account? Okay, so if you have, did you answer that one, Jan? Yep, uh, I can answer that. So um, to receive the information um, so that you can start creating an account, you will actually receive a like post purchase web pa uh, web page after you made the purchase, and or uh, you can check your inbox or spam folder since we will be sending out emails to confirm your purchase information. So most of our emails are like um, spam, so it might be best to check your uh, junk folder or spam folder for this. But if you have not received any uh, information to create an account, can you send us an email directly to helpdesk at ereflect.com? Um, I'll, I'll type that in. And also, uh, you have answered the, um, the uh, Matilda's question, right, Karen? Um, setting, about not setting them up in their own class. I believe I did, but if I didn't answer it to her satisfaction, she can send another uh, question and I can answer it more thoroughly for her. But it's no, she did ask about the fact that she hadn't set up her typist in their own class. It's no problem to go ahead and do that now and then move them into their own class. So the way to do that would be set up the classes, then move them to the new class. And I can show you how to move a student to another class. Yep. Okay, and uh, just to add, the user progress is not linked to the class. So separ separating the users into different classes will not lose their progress. Correct. Yep. Okay, great. Um, let me go ahead and jump back over and show you how to move a student to another class. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and let's see. We will start with, we'll move John. So we're going to go to our classes and we're going to just move John to the demo class. So we'll click on demo class and right here under class menu, it says enroll students. We'll click that and we're going to select to put John in the demo class now. So we're pulling him out of the class name John and putting him into the demo class. Here's the important thing that you need to see. Down here at the bottom it says, remove from other classes when enrolling in a new class. And that box is checked. If you're moving from one typing class to another typing class, that works great. If you are trying to enroll a student in one of the other classes, one of the IT classes, for example. You need to watch this so that you don't accidentally unenroll him from the typing class. If you do, he will not lose his work because, again, his work is tied to him as a user. You simply have to put him back in the class. Uh, you just want to make sure that you don't unenroll him if that's not what you want. Now, in this case, I do want to pull him from the class name John and put him in the class name Demo. So I'm going to leave the box selected and hit Enroll Selected Users. We'll go back to the class. And now, click on Demo Class and Students. And you will see that John is now in this class. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
can we please go over how to gather the student report? Um, I'm not sure what you're wanting to do when you say gather the student report. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the reports for the demo class again and see what um, might be here that might answer your question. And if not, then you'll need to ping again into the Q&A. So we've clicked on classes. We're going to use the demo class because we've created some activity here. And we'll click on reports. And we have, let's see, we have our choices right here from the dashboard dropdown for individual student performance, typing performance, hand performance, and typing mastery. We're going to do individual student performance. And right here, it's going to show us the typing mastery, their current speed, accuracy, adjusted speed, how long they've been working in the program, and how many points they've acquired so far, and the last class lesson or course that they've completed in their typing curriculum. So I'm hoping that this is giving you the information that you're looking for when you say gather reporting. If not, let me know. Uh, let's see. You mentioned turning off gameplay. Is there a separate section for games that are not part of the lesson? If so, where is that? Okay, let's jump back over. And let's try to look at this through the student interface. So I've clicked on users. And right here is our student interface button. We're going to click that view student interface right here. and play right here. So when they click play, when the student logs in, I showed you where the two tasks that we created will show up. There's an alert right here for the student. If the students click on play, it will allow them to play whatever games are appropriate for the level of the lesson that they're currently in. So these games that are grayed out here they have not progressed far enough along through the lessons to be able to successfully play those games. So that's why the games that are um, not grayed out are the ones available to them to play. Um, so we have Typing Fun. There's two of them. We have Accuracy Building Games right here, Speed Boosting Games, and there are no keys, keyboard skills yet because they haven't progressed far enough along. And then we have the standard activities again, and these the students would not consider to be games. These are just simply practice or drills that are outside of the normal typing program. All right. I made a mistake, and my son has been using my admin account to do his work. So when we log in under his student account, it says he hasn't done any work. Um, this one I'm going to have to defer to our technical support. So Jan, can you see this? Uh, I don't see the person's name on here, but we will need to get that message to our technical folks to see if they can move that account into a, so that that student doesn't lose his activity? Yes, um, that's actually Alicia's question. So it might be best to email us uh, ASAP to help us at ereflect.com. This way I can refer okay. you to our senior developer so that he can um, maybe create an account for your student and move the progress over to the student account. Okay. And I can't see the the person's name on this one. So did someone just acknowledge that they know that we're talking to them and they got the message? Yes. 
Okay, that's awesome, great. Uh, okay, I always have to log in for my student by going through admin and selecting login as. Is there a simpler way for my student to log in by themselves without going through admin? So your student should not have to go through admin. They should be able to go straight to typec.com and type in the username and password that you provided to them. So I'm just going to grab one of my screens up here. So they would go to typec.com. It should look like this. In the top right corner, you see login. You should be able to click login and the student should be, oh, it's automatically logging me in. Let's see who I'm automatically logged in as, me. So this is my account. I will sign out. Now you can see. So right here, you should be able to type in your students, or your student should be able to type in their own username right here, and then password right here, and then hit login. If you can't do that, I wonder if it's possible that you also set your student up and they're doing their work as an admin. Um, if that's not the case, then this should work. Have you tried this and it didn't work? Let's see who we're talking to. Um, Kayla. Do we still have you with us? Okay, if Kayla comes back, we'll definitely give her a hand in finishing that out. And if she thought, Kayla, if you are listening and you just couldn't unmute, if you, oh, was that you? Okay, um, so if, the, if Kayla did hear that message and you are just unable to unmute so that we can hear you, if you have attempted to log in following the steps I just showed you at the typec.com screen, if it's not working, then you need to send an email to tech support and um, get some help with getting that corrected. If you're still on the call, ping another message and we can walk you through getting that login. I'm even happy to attempt that login for you if you need me to, or walk you through it while you're on the phone. Um, all right, Matilda says we answered her question. That's great. Um, Tina Dress said, can you give me the email, please? I don't have anything in my spam. Is she the one who was looking to activate her account? Yes. Uh for this one, if you did not get any email from us, there might be a chance that there was a typo while uh, typing the email address. So we will be looking mm -hmm. into your full name um, to search in our database so that we can reconfirm that the email address was correctly typed. Okay, so she needs to send an email off to us to have that looked up and um, we'll get that figured out. Okay. Um, I would like to check the student's progress, let's say in a week's time. So you are wanting to compare where they're at today from a week ago. That is a great suggestion. And I do not know if that is currently available in our system, but we will definitely make a note of that because watching that progression, I think would be a wonderful enhancement to the program if that's not available. So I am going to make a note. Uh, I don't know if I can save this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a note so that I can make my list of things to follow up on. Okay. Uh, so Brandy, no, not Brandy. I can't see this person's name. Alicia, a guide sheet or Word doc that tells what speed or accuracy a student should be at by grade level. There isn't, but 30 words per minute is a pretty standard speed for all of elementary 
um, at whatever point they get there. I'm not saying a second grader should be at 30 words per minute, but I think that that is a great goal for students by the end of elementary, of course, depending on how long they've been typing. By middle school, if they can be even in the 35 to 40 word per minute throughout middle school, that would be a great speed. I teach English and knowing what it takes to type a paper, and um, I type about 65 words a minute, I can definitely tell you that between 30 and 40, upper elementary to middle school is going to be an awesome goal. I'm sure you could Google it and get all kinds of different advice, uh, but that is advice from me personally. I have not seen anything from Type C that gives those kinds of standards. So if that's out there, Jan can let us know. Yes. Um, okay. Maybe in our next webinar, we will be discussing that uh, in a more detailed way. Okay. I will make a note of that. Um, but those are some great goals for right now. Okay, if you discover that students have not mastered certain skills but kept moving ahead um, and they have gone back to the hunt and peck method because that's how they got fast to begin with. Yes, I get that. Uh, and they need to repeat some lessons. Is that possible? Um, they cannot skip ahead on lessons, but they should be able to go back and repeat lessons. Yes. And as far as how that re affects the reporting, um, Jan, the reporting should take the best score from each lesson. Is that correct? Uh, actually, right now it will take like the latest score, but we are the working on one? we are working on improving uh, by using the best score that the student um, will get. But if the student will repeat the same lesson, even though he or she has completed it already, then the current um, score will be recorded in the report section. Okay, so the new score will supersede the old score, so their score will stay, their grade will stay current, or their reporting will stay current. Um, all right, so that should answer that. If I forgot what password I chose for my student, how can I find out what it is or how can I reset it? Okay. Jump back to Type C, and I'm going to close some of these extra windows. And let's just go back to our admin panel, and we will pull up our student, John. Okay, so we're going here to users. We'll click on John. And let's see where John's username and password is. Because right here. Um, we click on user menu in the top right corner there and roll down to reset password. This will reset the password for John. Are you sure you want to continue? I'm not going to continue, but I think you can walk through the steps of resetting the password at that point. Okay. If you need me to go back and do that, you just let me know. Uh, this person said they don't. So Kayla, you don't think you set them up with their own passwords yet, so you'll give that a try. Okay. I believe, uh, so I see the email address here. Um, had to have a student go to typec.com forward slash type. I think it redirects, if you click, if you go to typec.com, I think it redirects you to the forward slash type. So that should work. And okay, for younger students, it's hard to have separate usernames and passwords to manage. Is it okay for me to get into Type C through my account and then select user or class as applicable? Um, 
I want to make sure I'm understanding your question. So you want to set up your classes like we talked about and set up your users. And then you want to log in through the admin panel and have your students complete their work. How do you want the students to access? Are you wanting to click on student interface from this point in the admin panel? Like this. Um, and then, so Matilda, let me know if I'm understanding your question. Um, Is that you what you're trying to do? Uh, yes. Yeah. Allow Matilda to talk. Thank you. you I just, you want? I can't help my third grader all the time manage a password, et cetera. So we've been going to the web page. I think we use my admin passcode to get in. And then from there, I think we go to classes and users and, but it is, it is somewhat cumbersome. Um, I just wondered if maybe I just need to explore it a little bit more when I get them in their own classes that may take the issue away. Um, so setting them up in their own classes is a very separate issue from how they log in and how they access their classes. So what I would do is get them in their own classes and you have a username and password for each student um, yeah. because that would have either you typed it in or the system assigned it. Um, and then the easiest thing to do if they struggle with those usernames and passwords if it were me, I would put it on a sticky note on the computer or something like that. And then just bookmark typec.com forward slash type and they can click on that bookmark. And once you put in their username and password the first time, you can just let your computer remember it and that will make it easier for your student as well. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll just have to give that a try. Thank you. Okay, if you still have challenges with that, let us know. Um, okay, here's another one who, okay, so your usernames never worked. Brandy, I'm gonna say if your usernames never worked, we're probably dealing with a typo. Either um, it copied and pasted out, missing a character or with an extra space, or you've got a caps lock issue going on. So you can see the username, I'll go back and show you where you can see the username at. Oh, it doesn't like the fact that I abandoned it. I'm going to close this one. Okay, we'll click on John and class menu. Oh, whoops, I don't want class menu for John, do I? Let me go back to users. I clicked on the wrong thing. Sorry about that. So right users, I clicked on John. Right here is John's username. So everybody can see that. It's jjernigan32. Um, so you can copy this right here by highlighting it to make sure that you have it correct. And then here, you can go ahead and reset the password just to make sure that you know 100% that you have the right password. And if the username and password for your student still doesn't work, then there's a technical issue that we need to take a look at, okay? And that was for um, Brandy. Okay. What exactly are the math classes? It's just math practice while using the keyboard. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to dig into what the math classes are and probably not spend a ton of time looking at what's actually in those classes, but I'm going to show you how to get where you want to go to take a look at them. So we're going to click on curriculum and scroll down to, oh, where'd the maths go? Career success. Okay, I'm not seeing math here. What am I missing? Actually, um, the math classes, is, it's not really 
um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. It's more on uh, words incorporated in the typing drills. I don't see the math on mine even, on this login. Yes. Am I missing something? So there's, there's no actually math classes that would um, work on the math skills, but it's more on like learn, um, helping the kids learn numbers or what mm -hmm. is addition by typing in the text exercises. So it's not really um, math. Right, which that completely makes sense. I'm, I just wanted to navigate to where it was to show them how to see more information, but I'm, it's, I'm not seeing anything about math at all on my login, so. It's actually I'm not sure. in the Common Core curriculums. It's in one of the Common Core? Yes, um, it's within the Common Core. So Common Core includes oh. different um, transdisciplinary exercises that has social studies related information, math related information, but all are in text type so that they can do typing drills in it. Oh, so if yeah, the world we live in, geography, they can work on that. And yeah. I'm just looking to see if we can look at a sample of uh, one of the ones that would be labeled math, but all of these previews are, looks like primarily science, or um, geography, social studies. I don't see a yeah, math-related preview. Uh, in Common Core grade three. There's grade three a math okay. in the ecosystem. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Math in the ecosystem. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We will do problem solving in the Pacific Ocean. Let's just take a look at what that looks like for you. Hmm. Okay, I don't know. That, that one doesn't seem like it pertains directly to math. Okay. Uh, it, this is where you're going to take a look at what's available, but like Jan said, it's not going to be arithmetic. Um, it, it's just typing exercises within the context of math, it sounds like. Um, what grade, so you can just choose whichever grade your student is in and then take a look at those sample programs. If you add it and you look through it and it doesn't do what you want for your student, you can simply remove it. Um, because again, the Common Core transdisciplinary curriculum here is really designed to support typing drills and they get to learn um, you know subject-based matter while they're typing but it is for the purpose of learning typing okay let's see how do you create a test you mentioned that we have to create the content okay so we'll go back to creating a test uh, we will go to our class, and we will go to John's class. Hopefully it will let us do it, even though we've taken our student out of the class. We have tests and assignments. We're going to create a test and assignment, and we're going to create a typing test. So I will click on typing test. We will give it... Title, and now we need to select the content. So there are exercises that we can select from here, or you can include your own text. It, my screen isn't resolved here just yet, so give it just a second. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the full screen, but if we click on, here we go. Um, these typing exercises right here, we can choose from any of these exercises here 
But keep in mind that these exercises are not specifically related to a certain point in the typing lessons. So you may be choosing a lesson that includes characters that your student is not proficient with yet. So you need to preview these exercises to make sure that they are suitable for your student. If you want to create it yourself, you click on Create Exercise. And right here it says Paste Text or Import Document. This is where you're going to include your own text if you know that you have text that is suitable for the level that they are currently at working through their Type C lessons. Okay. All right. Password reset worked. That's great. Um, just typing practice. Okay, we've got some responses to the answers to our questions. Great. Uh, do we have anyone left out there with a question that we missed or um, we didn't answer clearly enough? Uh, so far, everything has been answered, I believe. Oh, there's a thought, current one. There, there are two. I'm sorry. Say that again. Uh, there are actually two who have um, recently questioned. We have two more down here. Great. Uh, I'll just answer the a... latest one. Um, will the webinar be recorded so that it can be watched again? Uh, I missed the first half. Yes, um, this this okay, is recorded, great. and we will be sending out the recording after it has been processed. Uh, and those who have registered will automatically get the record. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, this question is, do the academic curriculum, not the dedicated typing curriculum, correlate to where the student is in the dedicated typing curriculum? For example, if the student does an assignment from Common Core, will he encounter letters they haven't learned yet in the dedicated curriculum? Um, that is possible. The learning drills or the typing drills in the Common Core curriculum are not specifically aligned to lesson numbers, but they are generally aligned. So if you start at the beginning, at the easiest level of the curriculum content uh, for, you know, common core curriculum content, um, those will be simpler. But yes, the student may encounter characters that they have not yet mastered. All right. Any other questions? Well, I hope this was helpful. I really do. Um, I have just been so thrilled with this program, and I'm really honored to be part of this webinar today. I've really enjoyed spending time with you and showing you how to get the most out of Type C. It's been great. Yes. And uh, I look forward to another one. Yep. But if we have so, any other questions, I'm, I'm available. Yep. Since this webinar has been a success, we will be looking into creating more, but uh, we can't tell when it will be since we will still be ev evaluating this first webinar. Uh, we will just shoot an email to everyone who have registered and who have purchased Type C uh, if, in case another webinar is available. So um, watch out for our email, guys. All right. So if yeah. Oh, we had um, one last uh, yeah, question yeah. slip in here real quick. Is there a way to select content for testing that is linked to what the students are currently working on? Um, so right now, that is on our wish list. And um, that I think that's a feature that we're looking at. And hopefully, that will be available in the near future um, as far as plopping some testing points in along the way. For now, your best bet is to go, I'm going to show you exactly where to look, just to keep an eye on what's going on with your student. So let me go ahead and close where I'm at. Okay, we're going to go back to our class, and we're going to pull up our demo student because we have some activity there. We're going to click on reports, 
and we're going to look right here to know that our student is making progress. Um, the individual student performance is the best selection from this drop-down, and this is going to show us typing mastery, speed, and the last course completed. Um, so I'm excited that, that we might have a few little improvements coming up on the horizon for some of the reporting and some of the testing, but for now, we definitely have some things there that you can use. You can print this page if you click on this drop-down right here, or you can save it as a PDF. That way, you don't have to use so much paper, and you can refer back to where the student was at last week. I know someone did make the mention of um, being able to compare where was my student last week. Uh, so you can at least print or save as a PDF so that you have that reference. And then in case you didn't notice, you can also choose how many, how far back we're going in their history as well. Uh, so you've got a little bit of flexibility right here in looking at that reporting. So hopefully that will give you a tool that you can use um, at least in the meanwhile. All right. So I guess all the answers have been answered. Uh, all the questions have been answered. I think so. Yeah. If there are Wonderful. no other questions, um, yeah, we can can end the webinar and just shoot us okay. an email. Uh, regarding Tina, I will be sending you an email so that we can discuss more about your account uh, via email. I, I have already been talking, talking to our developer right now. And yeah, there are some issues that we wanted to discuss with you privately since it involves information that you need to provide us. All right. Yep. Well, again, Thank you to everyone. It has been a pleasure being with you this evening. And oh, did we have someone there? Mm -hmm. uh, I think none so far. No, OK. It's been a pleasure being with you this evening. And I hope this was beneficial to you. Until next time, take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to those who have attended. and have um, participated with the webinar and we will be sending you. you another email for the recordings. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Have a great evening. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.